Hi friends, attorney Marina Chapelsky here, happy to be with you and to do something different from my usual analysis of immigration and news and divorces and family law and talk about the movies. Today's video, of course, I'm going to get right into it, is about my experience watching the movie Legally Blonde from 2001 with my daughter, one of my kids, because my kids are getting to the age where they don't want to necessarily do things with mom. I'm too old and too boring for them. Plus, they go to bed really early and they like to stay up much later than me. They're teenagers. Well, one is a teenager and she thinks she's my parent now. And two are preteens. My kids are 17 years old, 12 and 12. The little ones are twins. So the one time I managed to catch one of my kids and convince her to do something with good old mom. Law school? It's a perfectly respectable place, Daddy. Anyway, uh, the movie um, Legally Blonde came out in 2001. This was right before September 11th. I don't know if you remember this time. I do. I was in law school myself at that time. In 2001, I was in my second year of law school. So watching that and comparing it to what I just went through. I literally just went to law school the year before I applied. I took the exams just like Elle does in the movie. And I went to law school. I had to compare my experience of what happens in real life to this movie where this little blonde fraternity girl in a short skirt goes to one of the most intellectual law schools in America, if not the world, Harvard Law School. The big lawmakers and the big philosophers and attorneys that change all kinds of things like civil rights in the United States went to Harvard Law School. Before I get into all the details, I ask you to please Follow my channel, hit the little bell down there. Just do it. And this movie is hilarious. It's a comedy in the best Hollywood tradition. It has really good actors, good looking people, but it has a lot of mistakes in it. And I think some of this is deliberate just to make it laughable, just to make it funny. Some of these mistakes are on purpose. But the reality is so far from this movie that I thought I'd take some scenes from this movie and I'll watch them with you and then I'll tell you what's going on in those scenes and what happens in real life from my personal experience and from the experience of my friends who are lawyers and colleagues. The first scene is the scene where uh, L, the main character, decides to apply to Harvard after she has a breakup conversation. I plan on running for office someday. And I fully support that warning. You know that, right? Absolutely. Okay. But the thing is, if I'm going to be a senator by the time I'm 30, I need to stop dicking around. <sighs> Warner. And he decides to break up with her because L is too fluffy, too blonde, not serious enough. I think I we do. should break up. So Elle decides to follow him and decides that why is she not as good as him? She has an, you know, all A's, she has a good GPA in school, so she's eligible. She is eligible to apply to Harvard Law and why not? This is what I need to become to be serious. What? Practically deformed? No. A law student. Um, you know, on the one hand, it seems like it's a little ridiculous, to be honest, right? It's ridiculous to follow your boyfriend anywhere. In the first place, maybe it's not the best lesson for your kids, because why would a woman, when a man treats her so badly... If I'm going to be a senator, well, I need to marry a Jackie, not a Marilyn. <laughs> so you're breaking up with me because I'm too... blonde? I would tell him to go F himself, frankly, if this was me. If some guy said, you're not good enough for me, you're too blonde and this and that, and well, for whatever reason, I would tell him, go F yourself, block him on my phone, never speak to him again. The best revenge is being happy. Harvard won't be impressed that you aced history of the polka dots. What are your backups? I don't need backups. I'm going to Harvard. But in this case, we follow Elle and she proves him wrong. And I like that about this movie. I like the fact that she proves people wrong and breaks stereotypes along the way. Neither type of opera and neither type of story. There's a party going on and she's missing it. Hi, my name is Elle Woods. And for 
my admissions essay, I'm going to tell all of you at Harvard why I'm going to make an amazing lawyer. She submits a video essay as part of her application process where she's wearing a bathing suit. Just to tell you a little bit about how it works in real life, and it is true that you have to do an essay. However, most law schools, especially in 2001, do not accept video essays. And especially video essays where somebody is not serious, somebody who's wearing a bathing suit. Once again, we join Hope in the search for her identity. As you know, she's been brainwashed by the evil Stefano. Probably not the best idea to apply to law school if you're thinking of applying or your kids are in a bathing suit by a video essay. You should take it very seriously and apply and write a really good essay about what makes you a good candidate to be a future lawyer and a judge, for example. So that was interesting. Of course, never something like this would happen in real world, but I, I watched it with my kids and they laughed. They also realized how ridiculous it is. But in the movie, it works. And of course, uh, in the movie, there's three men on the admissions committee in Harvard. In real life, and even in 2001, there has to be women there. They would not be attracted to somebody in a bathing suit. They would want somebody of substance, somebody who's got brains, somebody who shows their accomplishments up until the date of coming to law school, and what kind of a lawyer and a judge they will be in the future, of course. Um, I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. And this is her first day in law school, first day at Harvard. Wish me luck, Bruiser. This is my first class as a serious law student. And she comes to Harvard with her little dog and her stuff comes later in a truck. And we watch this as I watch scene two. Totally love the part. Is the dorm life like that in real life? Very likely not. Harvard Law School, like any other college or law school, probably has rooms where two or three people have to share. And I don't think they allow pets and dogs there, number one. Then she meets her boyfriend in the hallway. You, you go where? Harvard. Law school. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? And uh, he can't believe that she's going there. And it's hard to believe even for me that after all the crazy efforts that Elle uh, takes with a video essay in a bathing suit with her, again, this makes it more entertaining. It makes it more interesting. My daughter loved it because she likes to see that kind of stuff. And for girls and for women, clothes are very important. So she dresses really cute in this movie and it makes it very watchable. And then we go on to scene three. The law is reason free from passion. Does anyone know who spoke those immortal words? Uh, I don't know if law is reason without passion because a lot of things, especially today, in law have to do with what's right and what's wrong and thinking about things like that have to do with passion and have to do with what people believe in. Oh. <laughs> um, actually, um, I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. In terms of this first day of school, actually this scene was pretty realistic and I've been in classes where... And it is true that in law school, even on the first day, you had to prepare and you have to read and brief. Brief means you have to read cases, underline and write notes for yourself about the major parts of the cases that you have to prepare for class and you expect it to be in class prepared and you expect it to be called on without any kind of warning. You could be sitting there typing something quietly, not raising your hand, uh, your hand, but the professor will call on you and that's called the Socratic method. And I actually have been in classes, one particular class, where the professor was so mad that the students were talking in class or I think somebody was sleeping and bothering him um, and interrupting his teaching that he walked out of class. So I've been both in classes where they kicked the student out 
and I've been in class with the professor walked out of class right in the beginning and never came back. I'm not going to bore you for too long with this anymore. The final scene is uh, we're going to watch right now and I'm going to see uh, what it is and then tell you what I think and if it's realistic. Got a latte, went to the gym, got a perm and came home. Were you got in the shower? I believe the witness has made it clear that she was in the shower. <laughs> this is her winning scene. This is where Elle um, has her victory. This case is dismissed. Mrs. Wyndham, you're free to go. Uh, how realistic is this scene? I guess it's the least realistic of all, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, there are many reasons, but let's start right from the top. First of all, never in real life would a judge allow a first-year law student to speak to a witness in a trial. They can participate, they can do maybe parts of things in the legal process, but a first-year law student never would allow would be allowed to be in court and cross-examining a witness on the stand like that, number one. Number two, her outfit is inappropriate for court, especially for somebody's murder trial. Uh, the, I, I believe the judge would uh, probably tell her to change into a suit if this was real life. Order, order. These are just the superficial basics, of course. Um, would she be allowed to tell the story on behalf of the witness like that? Where she basically says the whole thing, you didn't have enough time to hide the gun and you weren't really in the shower. And, and if in fact you had heard the gunshot, Brooke Wyndham wouldn't have had time to hide the gun before you got downstairs, which would mean that you would have had to have found Mrs. Wyndham with a gun in her hand to make your story plausible. Isn't that right? She's my age. Did she tell you that? Basically, you're not allowed to do that on cross-examination. On cross-examination, you're only allowed to ask questions and hear answers. In the closing statement, which is a different part of the trial, is when you're allowed to analyze what the witness said and put two and two together and make logical conclusions and speak to the jury and tell them what actually happened in your opinion. But doing somebody's testimony is not the time to do it and it doesn't happen like that in real court. How would you feel if your father married someone who was your age? You, however, had time to hide the gun, didn't you, Chutney? After you shot your- Also, she doesn't let her answer. She asks the question, but she doesn't ask the witness answer the question. She asks the next question and she just rushes with the following question. And that's not professional. That's not how lawyers in criminal uh, trials act. Of course, it almost never happens in real life too that somebody confesses on the witness stand. Father, I didn't mean to shoot him. I thought it was you walking through the door. Order. And you know what's interesting? I don't really watch that many movies that have to do with law generally because things that are uh, in the movies that have, um, you know, they change what happens in the real world so much that when they show it, it's so unrealistic, it really starts to frustrate me. And I can't watch it when it's so unrealistic. And the other thing that frustrates me is that people have this romanticized version of what happens in court and everything's so quick in movies. Everything goes to trial right away. In real life, somebody waiting for a criminal trial could be waiting for two, three, four years. <laughs> do you guys have any comments about this? What do you think about these scenes? Uh, you can drop in the comments and we can discuss it. My daughter, uh, Evelyn, liked it so much, she told the other two to watch it and then they watched it and they all loved it as well. That's right. Uh, if you want me to watch another movie and give you my analysis, I'll be happy to. Uh, I hope to see you soon on our channel and I'll be making more videos just like this and about immigration news in the future. Take care. Stay well. Well, sweetheart, you don't need law school. Law school's for people who are boring and ugly and serious. And you, Button, are none of those things.